Good evening to you all our viewers. My name is Emmanuel Rodeke. Welcome to this episode of Let's Talk. And today we'll be discussing great stuff here on Church of Humana Family TV. You can definitely get us and reach us here on uh, Church House uh, 413 along Kampala Road. That's where you'll find us. And I'm sure uh, you'll definitely get any kind of help you need. So today we'll be discussing street, uh, street children and more so gazetting ourselves to the Karamojong street children. So we want to discuss the plight of the Karamojong street children. So with me today in the studios of uh, Church of Uganda Family TV is uh, Mrs. Olule Rachel. Uh, and she comes to us from uh, 914 Ministries uh, located somewhere uh, in Uganda around Mukono. Mrs. Olule, you're welcome. Thank you, thank you, Emma. Uh, how about you say hello to our viewers and uh, the Hello, the viewers, and uh, I'm glad to be here. Um, so appreciative that you invited me for this uh, show. To my right is uh, Mugewa Abdul Hakim. Mm. Uh, he comes to us from Makinde Division, and uh, he's the secretary for gender uh, Makinde uh, Division. So he will be. Uh, getting to us on, on certain matters. Mugiru, how about you say hello to our viewers? Uh, good evening to our viewers. My name is Mugiru Abdul Hakim, the Executive Secretary for Gender, Community Services and Production, KCCA Makindi Division, and a representative of the people uh, from Chiburi Parish. I am glad to be here, Emma, and thank you for the host. Okay, uh, he comes to us from Chibuli and uh, someone who after seeing the poster said, uh, I must, I must watch, that guy is my friend. <laughs> so there are people out there who are saying, uh, that, that one is our guy, that one is our man. Uh, so for starters, uh, Mrs. Lule, or Mrs. Olule, yes, um, what attracts these children to get to the streets of Kampala? Because they're everywhere, in, you, you go to Chisenyi, they're there, in Katwe, they're there a long ginger road that looks like their headquarters. <laughs> so what attracts, what brings these children to, to um, There are so many factors that uh, are really pushing factors, pushing these children to Kampala. And if I say only Kampala, that would be a lie because this has become um, a vice that is affecting almost so many districts in uh, Uganda. So there are various factors. Um, for the Karamajong, I believe um, one of the issues that is touchy is that trafficking, child trafficking, that is affecting and uh, sending these children to Kampala. They, are also, they have also resorted into, like the Karamajong people look at um, begging now as an alternative way of survival. So livelihood is also one of the reasons why they are in Kampala. So uh, with the, um, I can say Karamoja has been one of the areas that has a lot of uh, violence, you know, uh, that has come as a result of um, insecurity, um, raids. It has also faced issues with um, had uh, uh, natural disasters like drought, food insecurity, and this leaves the community so vulnerable to so many issues as trafficking. The parents are left so vulnerable because they find it very, very hard to take care of their own children and they are lured into uh, letting their own children go to look for survival somewhere else. And that includes Kampala. So those are some of the things I feel um, reasons why we have these children in Kampala and other districts in Uganda. Uh, 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 Mr. Kim, yes, please. You, you come to us from um, from KCCA. True, true, true. Uh, research shows that most of these children in Kampala City uh, have bosses they report to every evening. And, and just like um, uh, Rachel mentioned here, that there is modern trafficking of children, uh, which, which would modernly seem to be modern slavery. Mm. Now, 
are you as people in KCC aware that aware of such kind of things and that there are people these children report to in the evenings after whatever collections they have made okay uh, thank you so much uh, it is really a fact that uh, Kampala as a city is dominated by street children mm. and uh, you're going to realize that in the major suburbs of Kampala or in Kampala in total we have a total of uh, over 15,000 street children and uh, KCCA has always embarked on various approaches to see this end but it looks like it looks like wheat in the water and uh, recently, the KCC passed the Child Protection Ordinance that we um, that looks at embarking on child protection. It looks at uh, criminalizing some of the acts that these children do, for example, street children. But before I go to that, uh, there is a scenario my colleague has mentioned in here that uh, begging is a way of life. There is a researcher that was writing a dissertation in regard to street children and begging and uh, at the end of the research that she was making she ended up being and loving to become a street children or a beggar because she was kind of elderly so she ended up wanting to be a beggar and you're going to realize that why because this is being done for survival people are doing begging for survival and you're going to realize that the most reason as to why we are seeing all these, the street children and more so of the begging on the streets of Kampala, it is simply because of poor and unplanned urbanization. That is it. And that is the reason as to why research shows that because uh, these children over, many of them come from the north and the northeast or. 70% of these children come from Napak. But it is simply because of unplanned urbanization. These people are looking for a way of life. So this is something that we need to address as KCCA with a work or a deal on the push factors. What is the reason as to why they come to the streets? It is not as an issue of what they term it because Simply recently I had a discussion that with some of the colleagues in the enforcement department that you know this is not all about rescuing as they term it. This is arrest of what? Of street children. So it is not an issue of beautifying words coming out with laws that are going to curb processes of street children. It is an issue of dealing with the root causes. Why do these people come to the street? Exactly. These people report to, they have primary people they report to, and they have secondary people they report to. One day when I was still at campus, I was traveling, uh, uh, traveling around uh, the route of uh, Namirembe Road. And a young kid, before I knew that these children really report to people, a young kid came close to me as we were standing with my friend, having a conversation because we were waiting for someone. And then, he begged from us and soft-heartedly I gave him a coin that I had. Now after giving this young kid a coin, she ran, he ran to the mother who was seated at the side, you know? And it is, uh, it is alleged that even these mothers that they pay to also have other people they report to at the end of it all. And actually that is the reason, without fear or favor, as to why these people, after all these rescues, because this is something I also told the ED in one of the engagements that we had, every rescue they make, all those arrests, all those uh, uh, enforcements they make, on a daily basis, it takes around hundreds of million. They are paid, UPDF is facilitated, police is facilitated, enforcement is facilitated. But I told these people, yes, how are we going to go about this issue when we are not dealing with push factors? These people reside in areas of Katwe, that is Makindi. They reside in areas of Kisenyi. Mm -hmm. Instead of coming to areas where they reside, because when you move at the streets of Kampala when it is clocking to 7 p.m., these people march back to Kisenyi, 
back to Katwe, back to different areas, precincts within Kampala, where they sleep, and others sleep on that street. So if we really want to see that we curb this process, we need to deal with root causes. Basically, if we want, many people in government and within our authorities use street children as baits for their resources because they do not deal with root causes. If it is poor urban, if, if it is poor urbanization, and research shows that 70% of these children come from Napak, why don't you think about Napak? Why don't you go to Napak? Because even these uh, child centers, that you take to them, that, you, that, that you, 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 you rescue as they term it and take these children to, do not have plans of uh, evacuation after these children have grown, after these children have been rehabilitated. What is the way forward? The mother sends the child to the street to beg because they want to earn a living. Now how is it going to be of help when you get this child, take them to a child center, uh, look after them for something like five years, mm -hmm. What next? But now, uh, uh, Hakim, yes, please. now that it is known to the mm. authorities mm. that there are people mm. behind this whole game, mm. what has the authority done mm. to get these guys instead of arresting these? They, they have a polite word they normally use. It is rescuing, they rescue. but I disagree that with is what they. Mm. That's what they keep saying. But mm. what have they done for mm. these guys who mm. have kept bringing these people? Because if you, even if you arrested them today, mm. Mm. In two days' time, they will again be back to the streets. True, true. That means the problem is beyond the, the, the children. Mm. The problem is with those who are importing and bringing them to the city. Mm. What, have, uh, what has the authority done mm. in, in regard to this? Guys? Actually, that is what I said, that uh, the authority itself, the people that, that are in the authority themselves, fear the kind of people that bring these people. And that is why they go to the low sides of arresting the women that send these children to school to the streets enforce the law for example the child protection uh, ordinance that cannot even deal with these people that transport these children from what from napak and uh, this is the appeal i want to make to the executive director of the city that you people we are tired of these missions to spend a lot of taxpayers' money in the name of rescuing street children. If Kampala wants to have a plan, a very, very huge plan of stopping this vice, yeah, go to NAPAC. Solve issues within NAPAC. We have ministers. Kampala is headed by the minister of Kampala as well. They have line ministers from all regions and from all departments. The minister of gender works within Kampala as well. Consider the fact that why do these people come from Napak? It is looking for a source of living. Yes. Create employment for the women, for the men that bring children from Napak. Because these children come to the streets of Kampala to beg, and then they are also brought to the street of Kampala by some kinds of people so that they use them as baits of employment to themselves. So we are not going to have uh, spider rolls that are only going to capture the small insects. You so know? in other words, there is some big that is, fish that is the fact, and, uh, and, and that is the fact. It is something that I even one time told the executive director, that we want a smart city as Kampala. We are talking about smart roads, smart technology, smart what? Smart use of roads. But the people that abuse the smart city are, can't, are, are vehicles of, of delegates, the country delegate vehicles, are vehicles of ministers, are vehicles of army officers. So if we really want to have a smart city, we should not have fear or favor to anyone, to anyone that is trying to beat around, create or create havoc in the city. We are still discussing matters of street children and more so uh, the Karimojong, more so those who are from Napak. Uh, Miss Olule, yes, who has the solution to this vice? Where does that, is it, the, is it KCCA, is it uh, government of Uganda, is it, is it with the Karimojongs themselves? Where is the solution to this vice of, of uh, the, the, the street children? 
I think, um, like I said earlier on, this issue is no longer for the Karamojongs alone. Mm. It's an issue that concerns all of us, the stakeholders. Um, the Karamojongs issue is becoming a very serious vice. I'll, I'm, I'm going to give you shocking information that the Karamojongs are even begging in Nairobi. So it's no longer a Karamojong issue, it's a Ugandan child who is on the streets uh, trying to survive. And some other people are benefiting from this. And uh, maybe some of um, governments need, need a lot of, uh, we need uh, uh, hold our hands together with all the stakeholders and ensure that we go back, like he has already said, to the root causes. Because we can't, um, I'm not comfortable with uh, the statement that I often see uh, through the media saying that we clear Kampala of the street children. And even using street children, really, there are no streets that produce children. These are our children. These are children that come from families, our communities, and we need to have a holistic approach. That government and the community in Karamoja have to work together, and all the stakeholders. Like we said, the pushy factors are very many, those that are pushing these children here. That includes, I'm telling you, it's so, the community in Karamoja is so vulnerable. I was even shocked one time, because did, we did some in, um, research in 2014, that um, most of the people, the Karamojongs, even don't know that they're doing trafficking themselves. Leave alone the big fish, <laughs> the big <laughs> people who are involved. But the, the ordinary uh, women who are involved in this thing, they don't even know that it's, it's, uh, it's a crime. They go, call their friends, call their family members, send me the children, because they end up uh, getting a percentage out of this whole thing. And who ends up suffering? It's the children. They sleep on the streets. Some of these children have faced a lot of abuse, sexual abuse, any kind of thing. So we all have the solution to this thing. Uh, Karamoja, like I said, food security is an issue. A parent is willing, at a time when we went for the research, like I said, I went to a place called Lomuria, and I was asking a certain old woman, she could have been about um, 60 years, and I sa she said her three children are all living in Kampala, and I said, why would you let your children go? She was like, why would I keep my child here to starve to death? Other than I would, I would rather send them there and they find their way out. And that definitely means someone else told her they survive in Kampala City. They survive somewhere in Mbale or somewhere else. So this, um, this has to do with um, all of us, the government. How do we put food security, uh, prioritize, prioritize this? as something that needs to be done. Any a starving man can do anything, <laughs> any <laughs> starving human being. Mm -hmm. So we know this very well. Uh, government has already put some strategies like putting the dams in Karamoja. Maybe they should extend it a little bit more. Put the dams, now that the, we have the dams, do some irrigation. And then the Karamojong people, because of the life, like they have been pastoralists for a long time. And most of them do not utilize the opportunity to do a lot of farming. So this has to go down to them as well. They have, uh, the leaders have to play their role because the pastoral community, something that they have uh, grown up doing is not something that is working because that's what is calling, causing all these insecurity, raids and all this. And if they are, if agriculture is something that is to be entrenched in these people, even farming and put uh, a lot of, uh, irrigation systems, and the young women and men are taught uh, to learn how to not, not necessarily beg to survive. They should be taught, they should be sensitized on uh, hard work, really, because that's the issue. Uh, when you're trying to rescue the children or the women on the streets here, they all fear, how do I begin surviving? Mm. And if they don't, they are not taught 
it's a culture that is not so much entrenched, especially in Karamoja, I know the culture, some of it. The, boy, the young men grow up knowing they have to go to, um, uh, go to take the animals, like um, graze them, and then after that they go and do any games and play, and then the woman is left to do all the farming at home with the children. And the men leave the women to do all the activity. So at the end of the day, what are we left with? What will you be able to produce? Something very small. And children have to starve. And then at the end of the day, we are vulnerable. And anybody can deceive us. For 10,000, they are willing to take their child off. And they are sent 10,000, something very small. So this, like I said, has to do with government. It has to do with the local leaders. And Karamoja has a very strong uh, cultural uh, setup where even the elders, they have what the elders in the community, those people need to be involved because these are the people that the Karamojongs listen to. If you want to have anything for the Karamojongs to listen to, their elders are number one. So these elders are need, need to be talked to. So it's really a comprehensive, it has to be efforts from all corners, partners, government, the local leaders, the people from NAPAC, like my brother has already said, NAPAC has the biggest uh, street children, like area that the Karamojong children are coming from. Some counties of Lokopo, uh, Lope, Matan, most of them are in, on the streets of Kampala. And then you want to ask yourself, what about other districts? Because if 70% of them are coming from this area, there must be a solution here. We must look into, look into this area and see what do we do to retain these children there, first of all, before even we clear the streets of these children, and we call it rescue. And for me, um, I want to back up my brother. The rescue, what I know with the rescue program, it should be really something, because that's what we do in our institution. We do rescue programs, but it takes a lot of work. It's a very expensive venture if it has to succeed. It's not a six months venture. It takes a lot of time, a lot of resources, but at the end of it all, that's when you see uh, clear fruits out of it. Because if, if it is just um, six months, I can tell you because one, you are dealing with people who are traumatized. These children, once they stay in, on the streets of Kampala, they develop a defense mechanism because the streets is rough they have to become very violent to be able to survive. You're dealing with people who have um, developed, uh, they believe they just can beg to survive. That must change. You have to skill them. Most of them have not gone to school. You have to skill them, give them entrepreneurship. They should learn that they, have, they can work. God has given them hands, everybody else. You can survive through your hard work. So it's a lot of hard work for all of us to ensure that these children are helped. Very interesting facts here. Uh, no street produces children. All these are children. And you can't imagine their children as far as Nairobi from Uganda, Karamoja. Mm -hmm. So it is very dangerous for us to be producing international beggars at that level. When we return from the break, we'll be still looking at some of the things. Say here, it is good to have a break before you break down. And so that's why we also had to break so that we can have a, a small break and then return with uh, some more energy. We are discussing the plight of the street children, more so the Karimojong street children that are flocked everywhere, everywhere. There's nowhere you can go, no city you can go to where you'll not find them. If you went to Mbale, they will be there. Jinja, they will be there. Iganga, they are there. Kampala is their home. Uh, and, and, and all these kind of places. So we are here trying to discuss and see what stone we can add to this. Uh, Mr. Mugerwa comes to us from KCC uh, with uh, Mrs. Olule, Rachel, who is the national director uh, for a ministry called 91.4. And they are so much into the girl child, more so those who, are, who hail from the Karimojong uh, homes and homesteads. And so we are still here discussing those, those matters. Now, Mr. Mugerwa, on the 22nd of April, KCC did a round in the names of rescuing and taking these children mm. to rehabilitation centers, and they did it. But as we speak today, not even uh, very many months, the children are again there. 
And then again, on the, tw on the 8th of June, uh, leaders from NAPAC came and met the KCC officials here. And, and they said they wanted to, de to, 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 to destroy uh, the homesteads for uh, where the Karimojong children stayed in Katwe, in Chisenyi, and these kind of places. Is this a solution, or is it even next to a solution? And how sustainable is this mission? It might look like uh, KCCA in its look wants a clean city. We don't want these guys on our streets. So the best way is to get them, kick them out of the city, so we can be clean. But I want to think all these are our people, we are all Ugandans. How sustainable is this mission? What I want to assure to you is that the day they made the so-called rescue, on the next day, these children were already on the streets. <laughs> so it, it, it didn't even take a month? It didn't even take a minute. Actually, when this rescue truck gets down to, to, to Kibuye, there are children that hid within Maki India and then come back at that very time. Where is my worry? You see, gone are the days when street children in, street children in Kampala were children normalized to be in areas of the city's central business district. But right now, in 2021, the street children were not in Makindi. But at the roundabout of Mubarak, near the military barracks, there are street children. At Kansa, in Kansanga, there are street children. In Gava, there are street children. Along Mbogo Road, there are street children. In Nakawa and Tinda, there are street children. So basically, this is a business that has grown. Because a business that evolves customers day in, day out is something that has grown. But for the case of street children, what should KCCA do? This is something that we told them. Meeting leaders of NAPAC, when we have the Ministry of Gender, but the there ministry. Is, there, is a, there is a minister for Karamoja. Yes, there is even a minister for Karamoja. I, actually, for that minister, I thought she basically deals with gold. <laughs> 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 yes, but then, if we have all those ministers, what is so special? What is so hard for you people to discuss this thing in cabinet? What is so hard for you to bring it as business? Because these are children. Where is my worry? We are seeing criminals growing from 15 to 20 to 30 to 40. Where do these criminals come from? Allow me to say, without fear or favor, some of them are street children. They are street children. Because where do they stay? In, in places where they stay, how do they live for survival? Gone are the days when a street child or a street children, all those street children could come to your car, stop you a bit or stop at you a bit, ask for money. Nowadays, I'm telling you, and this is a matter of fact, when you deny money to these street children, they can either spit at you or even pinch you. That is what they do nowadays. And now they even developed some techniques of begging. They stand in front of your car, start dancing, start dancing, you know, so that they can entice you to give them something. So government and KCCA needs to see this as a very, very, very fundamental issue. We need to discuss it at a higher level. In the child protection ordinance, it is also a crime to, 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 to give shelter to such a group of children. But then, how many landlords have been arrested over this criminality? How many are they? Because you're not just going to, by force, because this thing is done by force. That is why I, I disagree with my colleagues when they say it is rescue. It is a forceful eviction. This is a court order. It's a, most of a court order. It is by force. You cannot do that, and it is not going to, and, and it becomes a sustainable plan. These children need to be told. The places where they are taken need to be, need, need to be facilitated. 
That is why I said government should see this as a fund fundamental issue. Because we are not going to be in streets of Kampala. Nowadays, these street children also pick pocket. Because they are looking for survival. They are looking for the hard way of life. So, what has government done as the overall duty bearer? These are things that we blame on to government because it has failed as far as achieving a success towards them. What has it done? It is a role of government to provide a better, of way, a better way of life to the, children, to the mothers of these children, to the fathers of these children. At what extent have you engaged the cultural leaders? Because what is the, what is the, the basic uh, uh, income generating activity in, uh, in a park? At what rate of performance is it at right now? You're going to realize that these people are fond of cattle or cattle railing. But then, how are they performing nowadays? Where do they get their source of living? So, we really need to see a very holistic approach, a realistic approach as far as doing away with this vice of street children. Because nowadays in Kampala, we have a lot of criminality. I'm telling you, nowadays you pack a car in Kampala for four or five hours when it is, when it is uh, not, not well supervised. I'm telling you, you're not going to find anything there. These people, these street children still phones because they realize that if a person, uh, it was made a law in Kampala, when you're found giving money to them, you're going to be arrested. So if the people there that, that are supposed to give them money are being arrested or charged six months in jail, how are they going to survive? Meaning they have to go the hard way. Have you ever asked yourself where to do these street children? They have been in Kampala mm. for close to 10 or so years. Many more. years, many, many years. years. Mm. Where do they go when they grow up? Because the age seen mm. begging is always a similar similar age. Yes. The, 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 you don't see those who have really grown up. Where do those go? Actually, my, my, my colleague here, sister, was talking about the trauma they get. These children are, are traumatized. You're talking about their growth, but there is also a factor of the pregnant street children. They give birth. They give birth. Now, assume a street child has given birth. Meaning, she has given birth to a fellow street children. Because this child grew up when the mother tells her, oh, you know, go to the street and beg. How is she going to look for survival for the kid? And these children are, are raped. So it is not a matter of growth, because we are even seeing a lot of mad people around the streets of Kampala. These are victims of... Oh, the, the agents of what? The street children. They are the outcomes of the street children. Because of the trauma, they are traumatized. No one cares. So it is high time the Ministry of Gender. Because during the tenure of uh, the former Minister of Kampala, Honorable Chuala Chiyinj, a lot of funds were released, billions of money, that were supposed to see this come to an end. But nothing was effective yet. And, and the children are still there. And the children are still there. And they are there. most likely to still be and there they are if still, nothing is you done. Know, you know, because I talked about the worry, my fear, of the rate at which they protrude to different precincts of Kampala. I'm telling you one time this, this, these children are going to go to, 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 to precincts of Kololo. <laughs> yes. That will be serious. That is, how, that is how this is going to be. That is how this is it. The how, that is how this is it. This is it, you know. They are going to protrude to different areas because no one is bringing up a holistic approach as far as seeing them do go off the streets of Kampala. Now those who stay in Kololo, you might think it is a joke, but uh, right now they might be disturbing those who are going to Chibuli, those who are going to Chisenyi, those going to the suburbs of Kampala. But very soon, don't be surprised if you find them along the airstrip and they tell you give us some few coins that remained as you're coming back from state house or from uh, parliament or wherever. So uh, be expectant if nothing is, is done. Uh, Mrs. Olule, yes. 
we, 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 we are trying to see the best way and how this can be done. Now one, we are, trying to, we are seeing that there needs to be a solution back in Karamoja, Napak and those other places. What can best be done in Napak to hold those who are there from coming? That would be one. And then two, what would be the best solution for those who are already in Kampala? Because getting those who are in Kampala and throwing them back is literally doing nothing because even if you take them back, they will come back again. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want to think the solutions to the ones in Kampala mm -hmm. are very different from those who are still uh, in back Napa. in Napak and mm -hmm. those other places. Mm -hmm. What best can be done? Yes, uh, thank you, Emma. <clears throat> Before I respond to that, I wanted to give uh, you information that it's not just um, children giving birth to street children. It is generations. There are like three generations of street. I don't know whether they should be called children again or mothers plus grandmothers on those streets. The children you only see because they gain sympathy. It's a strategy like children usually gain sympathy. So you should see them mostly on the main, uh, like on the main roads on and the junctions. And then. Yes, but if you go down to um, Katue and Kiseni, where these people are, uh, even those that are sitting beside the road, you find that there are even grandmothers there. There are mothers there. So it's a cycle. It's a cycle that must be broken. And it, it, it takes the government and everybody concerned to do this. Otherwise, we have a cycle of grandmothers and everybody's just begging, practically, looking at this as a um, solution to survival. And this is de dehumanizing and we need to wake up. Because uh, as we try to clear, usually when I see this, when like we have dignitaries coming to the country, we try to do this, get the children out. Now we can't bury our heads on the sun anymore <laughs> because they have gone as far as Nairobi. <laughs> So we don't know where next they'll go. So we just have to wake up and do the right thing and get these children solutions. And coming back to um, the solutions you said, uh, Karamoja for Napak, uh, as earlier on I hinted, we, the government has to ensure that there's food security. For decades, Karamoja has survived on handouts. And we, they can't continue like this. They have been given uh, food stuff. And this is, it's actually a vice that is actually spreading out. Because if you're, you're used to be given handouts from World Food Program uh, or any other government uh, strategy to give them food, they no longer look at that. They feel like they should be given. What is the solution for them to have the food? Open, uh, give uh, irrigation schemes there. Because the place is semi-arid, it's, it's always hit by drought. So there must be a solution that is lo long lasting. I, I have no problem giving hand handouts as a relief effort. But if you give them handouts for decades, it's, it's one way to think, OK, I should be given. And even if I move out of here, someone should give me food. So government needs to do some uh, relief, uh, remove their mind from the relief aspect and just provide solutions. If there's a semi-harried, this drought always hitting Karamoja, provide, their, the dams are already there in some areas, increase maybe some of them because all this money that uh, my brother says is tons of money to take these children back should be invested in this area. Give these children, give this community water and be able to regate their food. And uh, the community has to be taught, has to be sensitized on food security. Not just, um, I have friends that live in Karamoja, my family work in Karamoja. You'll be shocked. Even when um, they have got a good harvest, young men and women or even elders sell this food with very little cost. People go to Karamoja to stock food, let's say maize or anything, because they sell them cheaply and just go and drink. Where are the, the leaders? Can you teach these people? Can this be taught to people? Because once you have sold cheaply, because the harvest has come, 
After that, we don't have food. And what happens? We are out of Karamoja. <laughs> we are somewhere trying to get survival. And that, that is actually the core, core, core thing. And then trafficking is really a very serious vice that the children, even the community must be taught. They don't know. Most of them don't know. Even when you say trafficking, they're like, what is that? They don't know what trafficking. It's only a handful of people who know that is trafficking. What is trafficking? What, it, what does it entail? Uh, who is involved in this trafficking? These people must be taught. But what is the thing? The thing is that if they are vulnerable, the things that make them vulnerable for trafficking is if they don't have an alternative to livelihood, apart from pastoral life. Pastoralism is it's not a solution right now, as we speak in Karamoja, anymore. They, there's a lot of raids and all that. Someone can have 20 cows today, tomorrow they are not there. And so what happens? So they must, and then make the place secure. I am happy if the government is trying to give efforts of trying to disarm these uh, people, but that must also be done in a way that protects, uh, because the person that suffers out of all this is uh, the woman and the children. When their husbands are killed during the raids, in the disarmament, they are left there. And what next? They run out of Karamoja and they come to the streets of Kampala. So as we try to give solutions and disarming the Karamojongs, we look at the woman, the mothers, and the children are the ones who get the, the hard feedback because then the men are out of the picture and most of the women here are child mothers. Child mothers and single mothers who are begging plus all their children. So in Kampala, the solution is not pick these children, clear the streets of Kampala, and take them back to Karamoja because, like my brother said, uh, a couple of days they'll be back here. <laughs> and then the next time we invest more money, take them back to Karamoja, then they'll be back here. I think that's not a solution. The solution is to rehabilitate these children. Rehabilitation takes a lot of efforts. It takes a change of mindset. These children, these people need a change of mindset. Most of uh, our young people have grown up in an environment. It's, it's hard to say because if they come from there and they have lived in, Kar in Katua and Kisenyi, they believe they must beg. They are even fearful to live a different life apart from begging. And there must be a change of mindset. And these uh, homes, like he says, must be facilitated. Because if you tell me you're rehabilitating a child whose life has changed completely, who believes they must beg, they, 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 they must, um, and we are only focusing on children, for us to break this, we must also focus on the child mothers. A majority of these are people who are around 12 to 20 years. We even have children already. And most of the, the, the partners, even like NGOs, go for children because it's easy to handle the children. <laughs> it's easy because they, they are easily transformable. But these young women, if we handled also the young, the youth, equip them, skill them, give them a livelihood. Any woman who has a livelihood will not love her child to be on the streets. And if you notice, this vice is more on the women. And so the woman must be a focus here. And like my brother said, the Minister of Gender must really wake up and look at this as a very serious issue. Because if these uh, young women and uh, helped, you find that they know they must survive. They say this is dehumanizing. I can't be begging. I can work very hard actually to survive. This is something they have changed their mindset and they are able to survive on their own. They would never love their child to be here. Something that is striking, do you know that some of these women, the children that they are carrying are not their own? It's a strategy that, is, that they use, even in Katu or Kisenyi. You go and ask your friend, can you give me your child? And the whole day, I'm on the streets carrying your child 
under the sun, under the rain, they get the money, and then you share the money. Can you imagine that? Like any mother, I don't think you'd love that. But if, if we handle this situation in a way that this is a change of mindset, skilling, empowering people, this would change. But if he's just picking them and taking them to Karamoja, the song is going to continue. Now, Akim, we have about uh, seven minutes to, to jump out of the studio. Mm -hmm. what, 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 in your own look, and maybe what you discuss in, in, uh, in council, in, uh, with, with all the leadership there, is there anything in, in, in line, apart from grabbing these children and throwing them out of Kampala, something that, that would really cause rehabilitation, something that would cause them to change uh, mindset and something of that kind, and have, have them look at life in a different way. Is there something in, in that line? Okay, uh, thank you so much. As, uh, as KCCA, because you know KCCA is limited with a budget, and it is very sad in regard to the previous budget of 473 billion, it was reduced to 370 something billion. So KCCA, as far as handling the, 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 the existence or the seeing the removal of street children from Kampala, cannot handle it itself. That is the fact. And uh, as KCCA, ours was to pass the law. And ours, again, should be in regard to enforcement. The issue of street children should be looked at at cabinet level. The minister of gender should wake up. The minister of Karamajong affairs, because the minister of Karamajong affairs and Karamoja is the root cause of street children in Kampala, because that is where they come from. Because there are some questions that even come to my mind. How do these people travel to Kampala when coming? A one friend of mine told me that, you know, when you're going to Karamoja, these two children are given free lifts because they stand from Kampala to Karamoja, so they do not pay any penny as far as transporting them back. They transport themselves uh, on, on lorries, on trucks, so they find ways of transporting themselves to Kampala. We have roadblocks in different roads of Uganda. Can't we have check-ups of whether they are street children? If there are children in these buses, can we ask the people in the buses who owns these children? Because we need to curb them from traveling to Kampala. That is the hard way. The way we are going to solve street children in Kampala is not the way we are going to solve street children in Napak. We have the leaders. These leaders should be engaged on a serious note, not just inviting them to the city for a discussion. No, 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 no. They should handle it at their level, at district levels, at municipality levels, at all levels in their, in their areas, and come up with a way forward of maintaining and creating a suitable environment for the children and the parents within their districts. And then two, here in Kampala, look at the local leaders. We have the LC1 chairpersons that house and host these two children. Those people should be engaged. They should be called because Maki India only has 22 parishes. If we call the LC2 chairpersons to identify us the spots where these children reside, there are only 22 persons. These people should be engaged should be engaged. Then after, they should identify to us the areas in which these people reside, the children. Where do they reside? Because I told you, as I reiterated before, get to the streets of Kampala at 7 or at 10. Actually, these street children go back home in phases. Some go back at 7, others that stay late in the night go back at 10, 11. Go to where? To areas where they reside. And then as KCCA, enforcement. In Kampala we have all the laws, but we have weaker or weak implementers. If as we the leaders passed the child protection ordinance, 
It has all things that do with curbing street children. Child labor, begging is a crime. It was criminalized. Giving someone money was criminalized. Sending your child to beg was criminalized. Then why shouldn't KCCA implement such? But so, how can that be implemented when the people, uh, when the big fish are the ones who are funding? No, you, 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 you know, even engage the big fish <laughs> if you really want to see this talk. So, how, as a, How can the big fish uh, uh, cut I'm telling own, you, uh, I'm telling you, my brother, the executive director of Kampala and the minister of Kampala plus the state minister of Kampala know the root causes of street children in Kampala. They know it is high time we walk to the top. If KCCA really wants a smart city, provide environment that is smart enough to accommodate everyone. If it is really a smart city and we have accepted that we should deal with street children as KCCA, bring out rehabilitation centers to them. Engage all these civil society organizations, NGOs, that deal with street children. Engage them. We know as, as uh, those organizations, they have challenges of the plans of uh, after these children have been rehabilitated. The plans of uh, the aftermath of rehabilitation. You people should sit and come up with a holistic plan that is going to deal with the aftermath of rehabilitation. After these people have been taken to school, uh, trained, uh, uh, a lot of work has been done of them, uh, has been done on them. Then what after? When they age to 17, what after? You know, it is high time we sat and have a holistic discussion in regard to that. Thank you very much. I want to thank uh, you, Mugera Hakim Abdul, mm. uh, for making time to come and uh, make some good sense of. Of, of this topic and add a brick to see how best we can have uh, the Karimojongs become real genuine human beings who are not on the streets but somewhere making better life. Thank you Mrs. Olule thank you. For, for coming through. It's a, it's a big pleasure and thank you for making time to come through. Thank you. Uh, from my and the team it's a, it's a good night. Uh, uh, World Cup is on shortly from now, so I'll also be running to watch. <laughs> but just know it from us here that uh, there is no street that produces children. Children are just pushed from somewhere to the streets. So we must do everything within our ability to see that these children get home and become responsible citizens. From my and the team, it's a good night. Merry Christmas. Enjoy the night.